Good afternoon and welcome to the Codal Minerals PLC investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab. Situated in the right corner of your screen, just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives in the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Bernadette with the CEO. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, Alessandro. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for all shareholders, ladies and gentlemen, attending today. And I'm pleased to say uh, with me is Steve Zaninovich, our uh, Executive Director for Development. And Steve is actually joining us from Bamako, Mali today, where he is on site working with the team for the development. What we'd like to do initially is give a quick presentation, and I know some of this will be a bit repetitive to our regular followers, but it is important that we lay out the activities of the company and uh, give a guidance to what we intend to do over the next period, bringing us to production by the end of this year. So let's proceed. Um, you're all aware that we, we, we're targeting production by the end of this year. And really, we feel that we are in a bit of a race to become the next lithium producer in Africa. Uh, you know, perhaps in some ways it's a meaningless race because the most important thing for us is actually to get our project into development. And in doing our transaction last year with the Hainan Group, I think we really secured our future. We've had more than enough funding. We're fully funded for development. We're fully funded for the capital build of the stage one DMS development at Anguilana. And in addition, we have, we have further funds for additional drilling, targeting increased in our resource base. We have funds for further engineering, targeting the optimization of our phase two flotation plant and further funds to allow us to fully develop the Baguni Lithium project, which we think is a fantastic project will be a long life mine and will be a great opportunity for us to leverage into other projects. Um, I think this has been a really critical time for us in the lithium sector and we'll have a few comments uh, later in the presentation about the state of the market. We see it has been in a lull over the last 12 months or so, but really starting to pick up and may, may well be in our favor come the end of the year when I think we'll be producing into a rising and strong lithium market. So the three points we really like to make is number one, our project in Baguni, we have a solid joint venture partnership with the Hainan and Fosun Group. They're very supportive. They're very keen for the development. As you would have seen today with our announcement, we're looking to secure as much of the product from the site for them, for their development plans and it's uh, really critical for us that we've secured 100% offtake, no lower than market price for our product, uh, really secures our, our cash flow and production from Baguni. We're already underway. One of the key things obviously is ensuring that we have access and the road constructed to site is pretty much an all-weather road, uh, fully, fully ready for the mining fleet to mobilize to site and will will be well and truly useful for us over the life of the mine secondly our project is a very good project that's expected to generate strong free cash flow we are looking at production commencing before the end of 2024 uh, based on our stage one dms development at the Anguilana prospect higher grade course of mineralization low capex and low cost production should deliver us substantial cash flows. And finally, as we mentioned, as I mentioned in the preamble, we believe we have significant upside still remaining at Baguni. We have a large area under the mining license of over 97 square kilometers within a, a larger 300 square kilometer land holding. We increased our resource this year to 31, just under 32 million tons increase that by 40 percent with one drilling program we will be drilling again next week at baguni again targeting extensions to boomer which is looking like a fantastic prospect considerable 
uh, opportunity to again expand that resource consistent with open pit mining and flotation uh, flotation recovery that means that our Sogola Ballet and Bumu prospects will, will underpin the flotation plant for many years. And as we've alluded to in our announcements, we are looking to possibly bring forward the flotation plant just on the opportunity that these increased resources bring us. Where we are, and you will have seen the announcement we put out this week that gave as much of a detailed update as we, as we can. And I would like to uh, make shareholders aware that unfortunately in a development phase, there's often periods where lots of activity mm -hmm. is happening on site and through contract negotiations and through uh, engineering work that actually doesn't lead to times when we can have useful announcements that actually mean a lot to our shareholders. What we did announce this week was actually some very significant end results of long work. Importantly, we were able to confirm that our capital estimate of $65 million US remains solid. We stress tested it a few times during our work as CODEL individually, and now with the joint venture, we're still confident to say $65 million will build us a 1 million tonne plant per, 1 million ton per annum DMS plant at Inguilana. We've ordered the long lead items, the DMS units and the crushing system with fabrication already commenced in China. The groups we selected for this work have extensive experience in A, DMS units for the High Wang group, actually working on plants currently in Namibia, Nigeria and throughout China. Um, so a very, a very positive group to work with and Beijing High Dynamic for the crushing circuit, uh, an excellent group with a long pedigree of crushing. Mining contractor, we're very happy to have announced that we're employing a local Malian contractor, the EGTF, in consortium with uh, a, a, an explosive manufacturer in Oshin, who are able to provide not only support on the drill and blast, they're able to supply capital and trucking and financial support. That means that we'll get the best service out of both groups. You would have seen, we were very happy again to have announced that the Mali Environment Minister visited our site. In fact, I believe it's his second or third visit directly to our Baguni Lithium project. And each time we get a very positive uh, reaction and and feedback on our progress and on our plans for the development. The ESIA that was completed by, by our team has been approved and the phase one DMS development has been approved by the government and fully supported. Importantly for us, it's always about maintaining strong relationships with our local community. At the, at the village level, the people who work around us and live around us, at the community level through Baguni and the governor and the region, as well as into Bamako. And that's part of when we look at things like paying the compensation, developing a community development plan and working with, a, with the people around us to make sure that we can develop our project and work well with the local community. And finally, clearly, we reiterated and still are confident to say we expect to be in production in the quarter four 24. So this, this calendar year, we'll be intending to ship out spodumene from our project. Bit of a construction schedule. And again, uh, a lot of this is similar to the work that was put together by CODEL and now in conjunction with our joint venture partners, we are confident to say that this schedule, working with the Chinese manufacturers and our team, we expect to be commissioning and, produ and producing in December 2024. Um, as you can see back there in March, DMS units, crushes ordered, site work commencing in April, uh, civil designs, mining fleet mobilised, etc. It's a well thought out and busy schedule. Uh, as I mentioned, Steve is actually on site in Mali at the moment, working with the team and guiding with his experience and our team's experience to make sure that we can meet this schedule. 
project team is obviously, we've mentioned many times, a, a strong point for us, but also a critical thing for any operation. And starting with uh, our country manager there, Mohamed Nyare, instrumental in making sure that we've maintained our licenses throughout our exploration and development work, and now, and now working with us to make sure that the licenses and transfers happen as soon as possible. We've been very pleased to welcome Yuxing Chai and Jerry Gao. Yuxing as our general manager for the operation and Jerry Gao as a vice president for the uh, processing and uh, in deeply involved in the development process. Both experienced in Africa, both with experience in open pit mining and uh, a great understanding of the mining industry. Uh, Steve, you would have heard me say many times his extensive experience in West Africa, multiple developments, uh, in, and immediately before joining us was actually working with the development of the Bald Hill Lithium Mine in Western Australia. So immediate practical experience, as well as long history in West Africa. And finally, our Chief Financial Officer, Paul Reeves, who has again worked in Mali in West Africa understands intimately the requirements of the OHADA and ECOWAS and all sorts of accounting things that probably are a bit beyond me, but we're very confident and comfortable with our team that we will know we'll be able to bring our project to development uh, in budget and on time. Uh, and just in some of that, I'd actually like Steve now to have a few words about what we're actually doing on site and uh, a brief summary of some actual financials for the Baguni project. Thank you, Bernard. The summary of the stage one DMS um, production figures are there. It was announced some time ago. Um, we've seen some questions about asking for an update, which we'll do in, in the course of the, the next quarter or so. Uh, but still very robust. Uh, our average life of mine concentrate price was 2080 for um, our cash flow forecasts, which gives you, you know, very uh, high NPV and, and a lot of cash flow. So we're very confident still that we're going to meet our CapEx um, $65 billion cap. Um, on the OPEX side, our mining contractor costs are in line and, and in fact just under the allowances in our OPEX uh, from that announcement. So moving forward, we'll continue to provide updates uh, when things of significance do happen. Uh, in the near term, our mining contractor is gearing up to mobilise on site and they'll start clearing the site very quickly. Just to reiterate, We've had discussion ourselves internally about the timeline. Uh, the schedule is is tight. And when you look at the potential for rain interrupting the middle of our construction period, we've taken that into account in our design and also in the footprint. It's actually quite a small fo footprint when you consider other projects uh, in the region. It's a robust design. The design that DRA provided was then forwarded to our Chinese partners. And we're very confident with the, the crushing system that BHD are, are providing for us, uh, and also the DMS uh, plant and equipment from Haiwang. As Bernard said, both very experienced um, Chinese suppliers, and we have assistance from the Hainan mining team in China, who are domiciled one in each of the offices of those uh, suppliers to make sure that things are done on time and uh, we're hoping at this stage, we've been told that all of our civil design work will be completed by the end of next month, which will see us looking to get into our concrete construction pretty quickly, gives us a couple of months before the rain starts in July. So it's tight. We know the area well. Uh, we know what how to work in, in this environment, uh, rain, hail or shine, but getting out of the ground quickly, getting our concrete uh, started before the, uh, the wet season comes will underpin our success to complete this project on time. Uh, we did see a question about what the end of the year means. That is the calendar year, end of 2024, to be in production. 
A little bit about our, our JV partner, the Hainan Group. There's 100% offtake is secured with JV partner. They're a subsidiary of the Fosun International Group, which is a large conglomerate. The benefit to the project is that all of the offtake is in demand, direct from Hainan, uh, so that they can send, so we can send that concentrate to the Hainan um, Island, where the Hainan Group are building their own hydroxide plant. So secured um, offtake, which is very important for us at market rates, and we'll supply those feedstocks to Hainan in China. Um, they've started building their hydroxide plant, and as we've said there, 1.056 billion yuan investment um, for an annual throughput of 20,000 tonnes of battery-grade lithium. I'm going to revert back to Bernard for Lithium Fundamentals. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve. Uh, well, I guess as investors and interested shareholders in Kodo, we've all been following the lithium market for a long time. Uh, as you will all be aware, Kodo first acquired the lithium projects in Mali in 2016. And through that time, we've seen some ups, some downs, up, down, and now we seem to be coming in another progress of process of an upward cycle. This is clearly driven by the recognition that the demand for lithium is constantly increasing and the supply has failed to match that increase in demand. We have seen periods where there, such as 21, 2021, 2000 and early 2022, where there was an amazing price increase where it went from around $600 a tonne to well in excess of $6,000 a tonne. And clearly in our view, when you, when you comment, when we comment that we were only prepared to use an average of $2,080 a tonne over a four year period, uh, which at the end of that four years, we were estimating possibly somewhere closer to 1,200, indicates that there was a little bit of um, discrepancy in the market. What we're seeing now is a more steady, more regular increase in the price, reflecting that uh, increasing shortage. Um, you may have seen news recently of auctions of spodumene product in Australia, both from Pilbara Minerals and Albemarle, and recently as well from Mineral Resources, all achieving in excess of what has been accepted published price for spodumene concentrate. This is a very good thing for us. Right now in the down market, we're having access to uh, excellent quality people to work with us. Clearly we're having access to uh, consultants and construction groups who are able to come and work for us uh, at our request. And that's obviously positive for us in our timing for building the project, as well as when we anticipate first production at the end of this year, looking at an increase and in rising market. Um, just some, some simple facts here, you know, the, the growing demand for lithium expected to reach over 4,500 gigawatt hours by 2030, you know, another estimate from a bunch of analysts. We see that there's strong in, increase for demand for batteries to reach over 95% of the market now compared to what it was in 2015. And again, some of the basic things I use to reference why we see support for this strong increase in lithium, it's driven by government regulations. And recently we saw the news from uh, the President of the United States commenting and, and looking to put into law the uh, support for increasing EV purchases, uh, looking to work to lower greenhouse gas emissions. This is, what, this is what drives the lithium demand. Uh, we see that the spot price for spodumene has fallen, but clearly there's a bottom for that as the demand is always there. Anecdotally, we're hearing here in Australia and we're hearing from our Chinese partners and other groups we talk to regularly in China 
of the increased difficulty in being able to source significant supplies of spodumene for their plants to operate. All of those are positive for us, and that's why we're still very comfortable with developing a lithium project in Mali, why we're very comfortable that this will support a long life, profitable mining operation. Again, all further slides, I think we I think we're all familiar with these things really. Electric vehicles, increasing demand. You know, personally, I actually own one, driven one this year, um, great little car. And once you're driving one, you tend to look around and notice a lot more on the road. Uh, it's a, it, it certainly is increasing. Countries with the largest reserves reflect actually countries more that have spent money on their exploration and on their development. Chile and Argentina, long history with the brines. Australia, long history with green bushes, Rogena, the Pilbara minerals in, in the Pilbara region, as well as the Yulgarn of Australia, all reflecting activity for a long period. We see Mali, and at the moment, we know of only two companies that are advanced enough to have resources to find, and that's us and Leo Lithium. But increasing interest in exploration in Mali will drive that increase in lithium reserves. So I think just to, to finish on that, lithium is a great product to be in. Uh, our project at Paguni will be a profitable mining operation, and we are looking to position Codel to take advantage of our strong position at the moment to increase our exposure to the lithium market. Where, as I mentioned earlier, the way we operate and the way we've always operated is to make sure we work with the local community we're very proactive in maintaining strong relations. Uh, we've always in, uh, looked to employ locally and uh, advance the communities we work with. As I said, Mali's Minister of Mines, Minister for the Environment, has visited our site several times. Very positive feedback to us. Approval of all our proposed activities. We have a community consultation program established, and you should as a comment, that's about 80 people regularly meeting to discuss opportunities that we can bring to the community with our development. It creates quite a headache for our ESR manager, Dembele, but he's an excellent guy and doing a great job for us. You can see a couple of pictures here. Uh, we've recently upgraded a school. Um, I'm sure those kids are very happy to be in school, uh, but we've supplied teacher equipment and intend to do so for lots of other villages in the community. We've also supplied farming equipment to the community to improve their uh, ability to generate a great return from their work and we'll be looking to help and assist with further improvements in the farming in the region. I think that's about all I want to say as a summary for where we are and uh, I think we're very happy. I can see lots of questions coming through. Um, and I think we'll start off with some of the pre-submitted. But before we do, I'd just like to thank everyone for their attention through the presentation and just hand briefly back to Alessandro. Perfect. Bernard, Steve, thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab, which is situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those questions that have been submitted today, I'd like to remind you that the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. As you can see, we have received a number of questions, both pre-submitted and throughout today's presentation. So thank you to all the investors for submitting those. Bernard, at this point, if I could just hand back to you just to chair the Q&A and give responses where it is appropriate to do so, I'll pick up from you at the end. OK, thanks, Alessandro. Um, and again, thanks everyone for their interest in our project. Obviously, Steve and I have uh, lived and breathed this for a number of years and we can talk about it till the cows come home, but we have some specific questions and I do note that a lot of these are quite repetitive. Um, so we've broken down some of the pre-submitted into uh, a few chunks, so excuse me if a few people who've submitted may not get exactly their wording. But to start with, we'll address 
a couple of questions around the timing and the schedule. And I think as we went through the uh, presentation here, we are confident of our timing to say we will be in production by the end of 2024. A question that was submitted by uh, the question that was submitted was asking us, do we envisage any potential delay when the seasons change, i.e. the rainy season, affecting the building timescales? Um, one thing we have done uh, is obviously take into account that there will be a rainy season in West Africa. Um, we've worked there for a long time. We are looking to mobilise our fleet um, next month. We will be undertaking the site clearing, building the berms to uh, river and water protection berms around our processing plant and our proposed open pit. We expect to have the civil works for the cement and construct uh, cement and footings for the crushing and DMS units finalised and out of the ground prior to the wet season commencing. We have taken into account the possible effects of rain. Of course, they do have impact on the timing, but we do think that we've taken that into account and still confident with our um, estimate of uh, estimate of construction, commissioning and production. Um, next sort of question and, and range of questions was really around the uh, the uh, offtake and I hope people have seen that the RNS that we put out this morning may answer a few questions about um, some of the uh, offtake arrangements and the dealings that we've had with both our former major shareholder and long-term supporter, Rishin International, as well as our JV partner, Hainan and, and the Hainan Group. As we announced in November, uh, when we completed the transaction in November this last year and originally signed in January 2023, we had granted the right to Hainan Mining to formalise a 20% offtake for the product that was not covered by the right of first refusal held by Rishin. Today, we've announced that we have negotiated with Rishin to terminate that right of first refusal and we will be looking to finalise the offtake agreement with Hainan Mining for the full production from Baguni, initially restricted to the first three to four year production from the DMS, uh, DMS um, processing plant. Um, we think this is a great outcome for us. It certainly secures the sale of our product. It secures the fact that we'll only, we'll, we'll only be at market, no discount, and that we have a joint venture partner who is as keen as us to maximise production and work as quickly as possible. Um, the next lot of questions uh, relate to the transfer of the mining licence from our subsidiary company, Future Minerals, SARL, which is a company that was established as the exploration entity and is the current holder of the exploitation permit as well as the surrounding exploration licenses. What is happening in Mali at the moment is the government has a moratorium on transactions related to mining and exploration permits. We are continuing to work with the government, regularly meeting and discussing with ministerial advisors as well as uh, DNGM uh, in Mali regarding what we can do. And we're very, Firstly, we're very confident of our licence. We're very sure of its good standing and we're very clear of our approvals to work, to build the mine and to operate. Uh, we are looking to transfer as soon as possible. At this stage, I can't give a timeline um, other than to reinforce that this is foremost in our mind and we're working constantly with uh, our team and the government to try and get this done as soon as possible. It doesn't restrict any of the work we're doing at the moment. And what we are, what our understanding is, it doesn't restrict us in an operation phase. Clearly, we prefer uh, to have everything 
finalised into our new mining entity, the Minda Lithium de Baguni, and to be able to operate clearly. Um, but at this stage, all feedback to us is we have full rights and everything is, uh, all the feedback to us is actually they want us to be going as quick as possible. Uh, okay. Um, there's a question also, group of questions really, relating to a few of the comments that we've made, uh, both in presentations as well as in our RNSs, regarding what we uh, alluding to with our phase two development and whether we are able to fast track that and bring it forward. Um, as I said in the presentation, what we're seeing with our BUMU exploration drilling and our prospect and the increase in resource there, we're becoming very confident of a large scale operation based on Sogola Bale and BUMU supporting a flotation plan. We'd like to complete our drilling at BUMU as soon as possible, get a real estimate of the size of the potential open pit there, and then optimize what a flotation plant looks like to ensure that we get best value for the, uh, for the project. Um, so when we say we're looking to fast track that, that really means that a lot of this feasibility work uh, will be going uh, will be undertaken in conjunction with the development of the DMS plant as well as the early stages of the operation of the DMS plant. We'd like to bring that into production as soon as possible. At the moment, we anticipate 125,000 tonne per annum phase one DMS unit. Phase two, on what we as CODEL had uh, reviewed, adds another 235,000 tonnes production to our, to our Baguni project, meaning that the project producing over 350,000 tonnes per annum is really a significant project producing a very strong cash flow. Um, that's the driver for, uh, for looking to bring flotation in sooner rather than later. And finally, I think, um, oh no, not finally. <laughs> uh, another couple of um, pre-subscribed questions pre-submitted question, sorry, uh, questioning a little bit about the groups we selected for the um, DMS units and the crushing circuit and a couple of comments around their um, experience and uh, skills. Clearly, we've done a lot of work in choosing who we've um, selected. These groups are both highly experienced and able to deliver a product of high standard. They offer a lot of support and we have clear evidence of plants constructed by them uh, operating successfully. What we looked for and why, for example, with the DMS units, some minor tweaks to that design that will actually result for us, we believe in a better, in a better circuit delivering possibly a higher metallurgical recovery, leading to higher spodumene production and hence better value for the company. Timing, quality and support are some of the key things we look for in selecting these partners. A um, couple of questions, uh, a quick question and I'll, I'll address this, it's regarding the sale of our Baguni West projects. Uh, made up of two licenses, Mafalay West and Kemeni West. Um, we did uh, finalise an agreement with Leo Lithium because those two licenses are immediately adjacent to Gulamina. Um, that agreement remains on foot, but subject to the Mali mining moratorium uh, on dealing with licenses, we have not been able to finalise the uh, Kemeni portion of that agreement. We would like to do so as soon as possible. Um, and yes, all our rights in regards to the royalties, uh, reinstatement for potentially future exploration success and so on remain on foot. Um, now we have a few questions really regarding gold assets and um, I'll try and delete a few of these, uh, answer a few of these in, in one go. 
essentially, essentially we have been clearly focused on Baguni. It is our best asset. It's our major asset. It will be a, a great mine and bring a lot of reward for the company. As we've stated previously, we do have gold assets in Mali and Cote d'Ivoire. In Mali, our lead asset is the Fatu Gold Project. Uh, and we intend, we have planned, and we will be doing exploration activity on Fatu uh, this year. Uh, and certainly we like to get in there before the rainy season um, and get some work done there. It does look like there's significant potential for a resource to be defined around the historical drilling, as well as some of the new areas that our geologists have identified through mapping and surface sampling, highlighting some additional prospects. In Cote d'Ivoire, Nile is our most advanced prospect and we would look, we'd be looking to go back and do some drilling in Nile. But overall, our philosophy for Kodo is we believe we have a strong experience and expertise in lithium exploration and development in West Africa. And our focus will be on Baguni and rightly so, as it remains our major asset and will be uh, will be a very intense period coming up over the next six months at Paguni. Um, we'll be looking to try and expand our focus in lithium as well as do some work on the gold assets. Uh, so I think that will be, um, and, and so there's a question regarding an updated MRE for gold. Really, at the moment, we've never published a mineral resource estimate for our gold assets. Uh, we do feel that we need some more drilling in both Nile and FAR2 before we're confident to report a resource estimate. We'll be looking to try and do that drilling over the course of this year. Um, so I think, I think that covers all the pre-submitted and uh, summarises summarises um, those questions. So I hope, I hope there'll be a bit of excuse given. There was quite a number. Um, I think we've tried to answer them as quickly as possible because during the course of the meeting, we've had a, a large number of additional questions added. Uh, and I'll just start here with um, Matthew N, who uh, has questioned how realistic is the 2080 price assumption um, we used in the NPV assessment of our DMS uh, phase one. Um, and I will just say one thing, Matt, we did that, or Matthew, we did that assessment back in 2009, uh, 2021. Um, and of course, over the test of, over the course of time, that's looked um, very much underpriced. Currently, it looks slightly overpriced. And I think by the end of the year, we may be very close to the mark in that uh, in that assessment. Uh, what I will say is that that 2080 um, started with a period of approximately three months of around $2,250 a tonne. And in year four was down to $1,200 a tonne. So of course, we, we saw a range of prices um, that may, may develop. Um, I, I can't say how realistic it will be come December. What I will say is that at the moment, our focus is on the development. We don't need funding. We have secured funding. We don't need permitting. We're fully permitted. And we don't need uh, any sort of anything outside to prevent us getting our operation up and running. So I think we'll see what the market does. But as you saw in our presentation, we believe that the strong demand for lithium, the increasing demand for lithium and the lower supply than market anticipated will continue to support a steady, I hope, a steady increase in the price of lithium. Um, I'll just, uh, I see a couple of years from uh, shareholder Frank J, who I believe is one of my regular communicators. So hello, Frank. Thanks for your interest. Um, your question, I think we've answered a few times around the uh, building of the plant, mine and production, and really questioning whether we can transfer the 
when we can transfer the exploitation license from Future Minerals to LMLB. Uh, I think we've stated that clearly in the presentation. We're working as closely as we can with the government to try and achieve the transfer. In the meantime, we've been given all indications that we're everything we're able to do, uh, we are able to build. And we do say that the exploitation permit is valid. All its, all its licenses and all its uh, rights remain in force including potentially being able to export product if required. Um, we really don't see this situation continuing throughout 2024. Um, so we anticipate being able to transfer the license because we've said previously that moving to lithium mining and exploitation in Mali is a key, a, a, a really, key interest for the Mali government, for the Mali mining sector. It opens up a new opportunity for the country to uh, gain access to royalties and profits from the operation, as well as developing a new sector. And we think that's really important. And the government is giving us all indications that they support that and will continue to support us. Um, just one other question I'll answer for you, Frank, and that's about the uh, gold prospects, um, as I stated, we're currently not drilling the gold prospects. We've had our geologists doing some further mapping assessment and uh, field sampling um, to prioritise and rank those targets. We are looking chiefly at work at Fatu and Nile. Um, okay, let's uh, this out. Um, I'll answer the next question from Chris L, which is querying a comment in our RNS today. And thanks, Chris, for your diligent reading of this. Um, in, in our agreement with Reshin, uh, we're looking to make it a two-stage payment, uh, dependent on one, our finalising of the agreement for the offtake with Hainan, and secondly, a time-based or a shipment-based um, which states on the 31st of October, the, fine, the second payment will be made or it may be paid earlier within 10 days of the first shipment of spodumene concentrate. Um, and the question states, does this mean the company expects the first shipment to be out before 31st of October? Uh, and do I think it's achievable? Look, my answer to that, Chris, is that as you're aware, uh, We've always taken a more conservative approach to our feasibility study, to our schedule, to our capital estimates. Um, I maintain our guidance that we expect to be in production before the end of 2024. Um, I think it would be a big stretch to have it out before the 31st of October, but our team is working as hard as they can in Mali uh, and in China and UK and Australia to try and make sure we can achieve that as fast as possible. So we would love it if it was before, but we're saying before the end of 2024. Um, <clears throat> Cassidy Kay is asking a similar question to I believe what I've just answered for Frank in regards to can we um, confirm the sale of lithium if the licence hasn't transferred? Well, uh, Cassidy, again, I'll just say that the exploitation permit remains valid. It is currently held by Future Minerals, SARL. We do intend to transfer it to the newly formed mining company. Uh, at this stage, we can't. The feedback that we've received and have maintained from the government is that we will be able to operate fully um, if the licence is in Future Minerals. Um, however, we're working as hard as we can to uh, uh, to accomplish that transfer. Um, David M is asking us about the partnership with Hainan and how we can make it equitable and true partnership. Well, David, I think uh, my answer to that is that we worked extensively with Hainan through the due diligence phase and through the phase of 2023 to finalise 
our formal agreement. Uh, we have two Hainan, two Hainan representatives who've been on site since September last year. And as I mentioned, Chai Yusheng is our general manager for the operation. We uh, spent a lot of time working out a shareholder agreement between us uh, through that phase of due diligence and negotiations. It is uh, a, a fair partnership. We actually have Steve is appointed as the deputy general manager for the operation. Steve is on site. I'm regularly on site. You'll see the integration of our team um, throughout the whole process. I think it is a fair uh, and working partnership. The decision making and strategic initiatives, as you'll see from the announcement uh, earlier this week, our guideline of $65 million for the DMS has been maintained. Our advice on the DMS units has been maintained and, you know, in, in a way improved and we're very pleased with that. It's a function of groups working together and we're very happy with the, uh, with the um, relationship with Hainan. Uh, a couple of questions now. Um, uh, from Zan T and Chris L relating to the agreement with Rishin and what they intend to do. So, first of all, uh, Rishin have been a long term supporter of Codel, been a shareholder since 2017, um, haven't sold a share in that time. Um, this sale of the offtake agreement and their right first refusal over that offtake agreement. Um, is a good thing for us, uh, and I think it reflects Refu's uh, review that it wouldn't be able to beat a market price for a long-term offtake, and that it reflects a relationship between Codel, Refu, Re Rishin, and uh, and Hainan that successfully we've been able to agree that. Um, question is about is there a place to uh, for their shares um, I'm I am not constantly in communication with Rishin about their shareholdings um, we believe that they have a right to sell they have a right to sell of course like any shareholder um, we understand that they may um, may sell some um, indications are that there's lots of groups who may take up any shares from them. Um, we're not actively doing anything with that and we should have not actively approached us for the sale. Uh, and Chris's uh, second part of that question is, are the funds readily available or will be, or will we, Code, I'll be raising money? Well, Chris, the funds are readily available. They're part of the KMUK project and those the funds will be coming out of that. So it's um, funds coming from the development. CODA will not be looking to raise any further funds. Um, uh, question here from GC. Steve, perhaps you can give an answer to yep. this. The 20% increase in throughput. Yeah, it's an advantage for the project. Uh, thanks, GC, for the question. We. We know we can get a bit more out of the Hai Wong plant. Uh, everything has to align from the pit through crushing to the plant, uh, which at this stage, it would be premature to say, hey, we can um, consistently produce more than our 125 to 130,000 tonnes per annum. We see that as a great opportunity, especially these plants, uh, you know, this, these pegmatites are quite hard and abrasive, so the crushers and the, and the plant will take some wear and tear. I uh, worked on a diamond mine, very similar. Uh, we're shutting down regularly. So what it does do is it probably underpins uh, that we won't uh, fall to the downside once we get up into a steady state production. Um, but it does give us that upside. So not uh, <clears throat> as Bernard said, we remain conservative. We'll get the proof uh, out of our plant as we go from commissioning into that steady state production mode. And then we'll look to, to slowly de-bottleneck and, and see if we can get it up a bit higher. But it is an opportunity for us. Thanks, Steve. Um, 
another question from Chris. Uh, can't let one shareholder hog it all, Chris, but I'll answer this one. Uh, your comp does the company intend on any future share consolidations? Uh, look, Chris, we do recognise it's unusual to have 20 billion shares on issue, um, but at this stage we haven't got any intention to undertake a share consolidation um, and there's nothing driving that at the moment. Uh, we have a few questions here from Vati and Kay. Uh, and I would say, Vati and I've answered the mining license transfer, the question about reshin, what their status is now. Uh, and look, I know this is probably your last question that I'll address is probably of interest to all of us shareholders, but I have nothing that I can say here. Uh, where Vati and is asking, is Hainan planning a takeover? And what is the minimum value that we would consider for a takeover? Look, um, I've no idea, Vadian, what uh, Hainan are planning. We are working as a joint venture. We have a very good relationship with Hainan, and I think that they are enjoying a good relationship with us. We have no idea of any of their intentions along that. Um, what would I say about the value of our holding in uh, KMUK specifically and Code LPLC, my view is it should be much higher. Every, and you'll all know every MD, every CEO will always say that uh, we should be higher. We are a fully funded development project with a very good lithium project to bring to market, a strongly supportive JV partner, fully fully funded, fully permitted. It's a great project. So I think that's about all I uh, want to say to those questions, but thank you very much for your interest. Uh, question here from Barry S. Uh, again, thanks, Barry. Um, questioning our, uh, whether we're saying it's a bit premature to be saying we're in production before the end of December and refer referencing us to um, Premier African Minerals, uh, and Barry is saying, uh, realistically, you should allow quarter one 2025 as factor in the delay of delivery equipment to Africa. Um, thanks, Barry. Look, I think that we are confident with our uh, timeline. Um, you will have seen that we initially, as CODAL individually, did believe that a 12-month um, development schedule was more than enough to bring this into production. The time we've spent reviewing and uh, going through with Hainan, sourcing some excellent suppliers of our DMS and crushing unit, the fact that we're mobilising the fleet to site in April, um, we're still very comfortable with uh, December 2024 uh, production by that date. Um, and I will say that Steve has very experienced in West Africa uh, and our team is very experienced in West Africa and we've factored those issues in. So Steve, did you have any comment or are you happy with that? No further comment from me, Bernard. Um, as you said, uh, we've been planning on this project for a while. Now, all of the layout designs were done in, the, in advance to give us that advantage where we could basically say to the, the new, I call them the new Chinese suppliers, that uh, they must work within the layout that we've already prepared and, and must work within the earthworks design that we already prepared. So I said before, getting that dirt work done and, and that ability to just be um, constructing simple concrete um, structures, nothing complex, you know, with the more modular design that we had always envisaged, uh, it means that, you know, we re remain confident and we have good relationships with the contractors in country. Um, yeah, I've been coming to West Africa for a while and uh, coming to Mali now and, and working uh, closely with Jerry Gao, who's uh, is a metallurgist background and he's going to be the man that operates this plant. Um, yeah, we're working well together and uh, we remain confident. So, yeah, all systems go, Bernard. Okay, we better, just looking at the time, we better keep moving on. Um, 
question GC about the gold assets and Steve and W about the gold assets. I think we've answered those previously, guys, uh, but can take those questions on notice. Um, a question from Darren A, uh, which I will quickly comment on. Um, number one, bit of a three, four prong question here from Darren. Does the Leo Lithium situation concern you? I mean, I take it that means us as Podel. Yes, of course, we're always looking to uh, understand what's happening in Mali. Um, what we understand from their situation, it's very, very different from us. Um, as I've stated, our communications with the government uh, always give us the feedback that our licence remains in good standing, that all our permits remain in place, that all our activity is uh, approved. Um, we we think we're different. Uh, when you second question, does the transport MOU with Mali Lithium, uh, currently name change to Leo Lithium, remain intact? Yes, it does. We still talk with them regularly. Uh, in fact, last time I was in Mali in February, and uh, Steve, more recently, we're hearing some quite positive things about potential upside with the um, transport. And obviously, we're all aware it's a big impact on our uh, operating cost, and any anything we can do to improve that will be um, will be great benefit to us. Uh, I've addressed the comment about the Baguni West sale to Leo Lithium. It remains on foot, but not yet finalised. Uh, Barry S has put another um, question in. Barry, it's about the mining license transfer, and uh, we. Uh, very clear on that. It hasn't happened yet. We're working to get that done. Um, uh, James H asking about where the funds for the payment to Rishim is coming from. Uh, it comes out of the money invested into the project through KMUK. Uh, Chris L, another one, Chris. Um, does current issues in sea shipping raise any concerns for de delivery? Uh, yes, Chris, I think, but a lot of these things obviously are out of our hands and we're leaving the shipping and transport to the experts and the feedback we're having at the moment is we're still able to uh, stick to our timeline. Um, just trying to quickly move through some of these. Uh, again, mining license we've answered Ray A, Gold, sorry, we spent a lot of time answering that. Nick M as well. Uh, Batian, I think we've answered your question on the 14 million to be paid to reach in. Uh, Darren A, again, probably a little bit of a repetition, Darren, about the price, the increase in throughput, and 5.5% um, given today's price. Well, Quickly, I've answered the question about the 2080 per tonne price. We still expect to see an increase in price over the time. Yes, we expect to have a higher throughput if the plant operates um, as well as we expect it to. And yes, it's very viable to produce a 5.5% concentrate. That's our average expected. And we uh, look to probably have times where we're better than that. Um, again, and, uh, Darren, again, uh, long-term future, can we see a long-term future in mining lithium in Mali with the Junta in control? Yes, we can, Darren. Uh, currently, what we're seeing with the Mali government, they do refer to themselves as a transitional government. They have been very clear that they do intend to uh, undertake elections in the future. Um, we are seen, aside from the unfortunate moratorium on mining licences as they review historic licences and look to introduce an updated mining code, uh, a government that's been operating and functioning reasonably well. And from our point of view, we've been able to operate fully uh, with, no, with no issues. Um, Parvez A, uh, again, asking about an update on the gold operations. Parvez, we've answered that throughout this presentation. 
uh, John G, perhaps slightly different take on things. John here with um, questioning the departure of the French in the region affected the risk profile of the project. Uh, in our view, it has not affected the risk profile of the Baguni Lithium project. We are located in the south of Mali. We're two, approximately 200 kilometres south of the capital, Bamako. It's a very quiet, rural, primary industry area. Uh, we have never had an issue in that part of Mali. The French departure was instigated by the current government and supported by the population. The current French government, uh, sorry, current Mali government has made extensive uh, efforts to push the jihadists and uh, and fighting in the northeast of the country further out. They've had some success. Uh, anecdotally, we're hearing areas of uh, significantly lower risk than previously. So in our view, John, we're still always very aware of the risk. Um, with our partner, High Man, we're constantly assessing it. We have security manager on site in communication with all other mines and embassies in the area to make sure we have most up-to-date information. Uh, Paul C uh, asking about our website and Paul, probably a little bit prescient of you, we're actually looking to finalise an update shortly. Um, it, has, it has become a bit outdated, we agree. Um, Kyle uh, questioning again shares and Kyle, Codel has no intention to undertake a capital placement in the near term. Uh, we have no intention to issue any more shares to the market and we do not intend to undertake a consolidation. Uh, Ian, um, your question about a few videos from the site as activity increases. Yes, we love, we love the idea of putting up uh, collages and videos of activities on site and Steve will be um, be there to direct some of these with the trucks and the movement. Um, we'll be looking to do that and of course regularly with updates on community. Uh, where are we? Darren A says it seems excessive our funds to uh, reach in. Well actually Darren I think that the purchase of a right of first refusal over 80% of the spodumene product from Baguni for only $14 million is actually a very good price for us. Um, Coda uh, Reishin's investment uh, is actually in excess of the $4.5 million you quote. They've been a long-term holder and a long-term supporter uh, and they maintain their shares. I think, you're, I think you're joining two things together that don't don't join. Um, uh, quickly through here, uh, Chris W and Matthew N um, probably asking similar things. Uh, Matthew, no behind the scenes discussions. We would never entertain anything like that with Hainan. Uh, and secondly, no, there is no additional money being put in by either Hainan or ourselves. We have the funds for the routine transaction. Uh, for the termination of the offtake. Um, uh, a question regarding the government participation in Laminda Lithium de Baguni when we transfer the uh, license ownership. So we have our license granted under the 2019 Mali Mining Code. And as with all projects, the Mali government has a right to a 10% free carry and a right to purchase an additional 10%. We believe it's likely, and we've factored into all our review, that they will take the additional 10%. The maximum will be, uh, will be a 20% holding in the project. Uh, Rob, I think you're asking a very similar question we've answered before about the um, reaching payment. Uh, Gary is asking about the lithium's failure to reach agreement with the government. Um, Gary, I think that what I have said earlier, they're in a very different position from us. There's uh, other associations that possibly are affecting their 
negotiations with the government. You will, of course, have seen that they are continuing to advance the development of their project and they're up to about 80% uh, construction, I believe. Um, we, we see strong support from the Mali government for the development of a lithium industry. And while it's difficult for Leo Lithium shareholders uh, that they're currently suspended and in this period of negotiation, uh, it doesn't impact us. Um, I'd love it if it was cleared up and they were actually able to operate as quickly as possible. But at the moment, I see some concern, which is why we always maintain those strong relationships with the government. Um, uh, so let's quickly roll through a couple, Nick. Um, uh, Nick M is asking whether we're anticipating a buyout. Uh, Nick, I really don't know. We focused on getting our project up and running. Um, David M, are we all invited to the opening ceremony? Everyone is welcome in Mali. <laughs> and if you're coming to an opening ceremony, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, question about Sino Hydro. That's a partnership from many years ago, Parvez, uh, that was completed, don't anticipate any further work. And I think um, John F will be the last question we have time for today, unfortunately. Uh, John, um, John's question, and he's correct here, that the gold is separate from the lithium subsidiary. All our gold assets are held in 100% owned entities, 100% owned by uh, owned by Codel Minerals. So I think that'll be, uh, whoops. <laughs> Baseball hats. <laughs> Baseball <That's> hats. <laughs> you just got it in time, Ian. This is the last question we will answer. Uh, and again, I love these hats. Where can we get Codel baseball caps? caps? Uh, but I do, I do need to step in. I do need to step in because um, further to the website update, uh, we've updated our, our branding as well. So uh, we're pushing pretty hard uh, at our end for our Hainan partners to uh, support us in some investment in some new Kodo Minerals hats. Uh, I'm doing my best, Ian. Yeah. Come to the AGM, Ian. We often have the hats available there. If you see us at... Uh, conferences we have hats available there uh, or perhaps you might see me in the street wearing my Codel hat and shirt and um, I'll pass it on <laughs> anyway I think that's uh, I think we've covered what appears to be the most uh, general questions from shareholders and hope we've addressed them uh, as fully as we can um, we will be looking to uh, provide further updates over the next few months as, as development proceeds. And uh, as one of the questions require, uh, was asking about videos and probably more, um, more online updates, we'll be looking to do that as well. So I'd like to thank everyone for the time. And Alessandro, did you have anything else you need? No, that's all, Bernard. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll close the session off. Thank you very much for updating investors today, being very generous for your time. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This loan will take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Codal Minerals PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all. Thank you. Thank you.